Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's the final match. That's right. The Alienware Area 51 Dota 2 Cup ends today. It ends with this game three. It's NIP taking on Virtus Pro. Winner walks away with $4,500 and just feels better about themselves after the way this day started. I don't know, man. Anything can. Anything probably will happen. I'm not alone, though. I'm LD, of course, and I have the great honor of being joined here by Coddle Guy. Hey, Dakota. Hey, man. How's it going? Thanks for having me for uh, game number three. I'm excited. It's been a pretty hype. Can't ask for a better final. Going all the way to the third match. Triple counter throws, so you really don't know what team is going to be able to come out on top. It's like a wrestling match. I've been enjoying it. That, honestly, I, I think this might have been one of the most throw-filled series I've ever cast. Uh, and that's that's saying something. But there's been some games along the way, but... Oh, my. In my I don't know what it is. Like, two and a half, three years now of casting that one. Very close to taking the cake. That's when I know that we're... I feel like we're in a pretty good place with Dota, where they first started introducing that whole rubber band. It was way out of control, but the numbers were tweaked around a bit, and I feel like we're at a good place right now. We're in a, a good meta where we have action-packed heroes like Axe, like your troll, like your jug, who can be great crowd pleasers, and I'm in for a treat here. Let's see. Game number three, Virtus Pro, Ninjas in Pajamas. It's a difference of $2,000, so it's, it's, a, it's, you know, nowadays it feels like two grand isn't that big, LD, but I don't know. That's a lot of money. It is. It's it's also for the amount of time investment, right? Like, sure, it's not a you know TI level prize pool or even a you know a major tournament like ESL, MLG, the Summit, Star Ladder type prize pool, but it's not a big time investment. You win three BF3s and you walk away with forty five hundred dollars. That's fifteen hundred dollars a match. It's it's good money. It's also I think the viewers. I, I think it's been a fun format. I, I feel like we need a little bit more of these types of cups on the scene. I know Join Dota is doing something similar with the. The Join Dota Masters, which I think I either already started or are kicking off soon, and I, it feels like an it feels like a niche that's open right now. There's a lot of tournaments trying to be the big blockbuster online league or you know a major LAN, but these online cups are they're they're hitting me in the right spot. You know, it's like you have a hankering for something sweet, and it's just it's it's doing it for me. I really enjoy it. I agree, and I think the players also benefit a lot from it because it's almost like you know mini scrims for them, being able to kind of. That whole iron sharpens iron when these kind of tier one, tier 1.5, or even tier two teams get to go duke it out. And the more they look impressive, the more that maybe the people who are behind TI with the invites kind of, you know, raise their brow and go, you know what? They, they perform well and they create for awesome Dota. Why don't we go ahead and slip them an invite under the door? <laughs> that would be pretty cool if Ice Frog actually comes to your house, you know, Santa Claus style, slides down the chimney maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Old Gabe and Claus. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, I do apologize for those. <laughs> Gabe and Claus. I, I do apologize for the slight lag. I was trying to do the VODs, uh, and I forgot to pause the video I was working on. So it should be better now. If it's not, let me know, and we'll we'll restart the stream to get a fix. But I think it should be good. All right. So look at the draft now. VP banned this Drow again, second phase, which I like a lot. I, I think it's the type of thing NIP would very well do. They love to just bust out some sort of push cheese whenever they really need a game three win. And NIP, not going to be allowed to do that, at least not the way they hoped for. Lycan's banned, now Drow's banned. VP won a brawl, and they're going to get some brawlers. Bristleback and X. Yeah, these guys are big, bad, ugly. They love to duke it out, bare-knuckle brawl style. They love elongated fights, especially someone like Bristle, where the, the fight can really, you know, just allow him to build up all those quills, all those goos, and just be able to kind of tirade through your team. But you are getting a getting a bristle this early. I feel like there's still a lot of options to be able to take it back to someone like that. Uh, NIP go right for Eight Mother's Venomancer here, which he loves the hero, and obviously he doesn't like to go against it if he has to. And you know, I feel like it works nicely going against something like Bristle. I mean, he's going to be able to take it up, and he's a decent option for getting something like a pipe. But you know, he'll be able to get out the huge damage and. Beto's always a pain in the ass to bring down as it is. Once you do take him down, you're just going to be already so wounded for battle. And uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be rough. Very By irritating way, wanna, draft. Uh, this Veno yeah. AA, a lot of just damage over time. They they have great synergy, obviously. The Poison Nova brings you low, and yeah. the AA ult to shatter you. But I feel like they need a little more pop, a little more burst, something that goes well with pairs well with the troll. There's a void out there. We have not seen much void. I think he struggles quite a bit against this VP draft. Um, but something that 
synergizes nicely. So if not Void, then uh, maybe a hero that, like a Doom, perhaps, could be nice versus the Bristleback. It's something NIP run occasionally. I mean, looking at what's left, they still have their Era hero to go. As far as what Era has been playing, we've seen a lot of Slark, a lot of Storm. I don't think it's a great Storm game now, especially now with this Bane. There's just a lot of lockdown and a lot of early game aggression, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe they just say screw it and throw Era on the troll, even get like that... Oh no, 8 Mother Viper actually banned. Okay. It's going to say maybe they get the 8 Mother Viper, but never mind that. Bane, man. Haven't seen this hero in a while. I miss it. Has I he mean, gotten maybe... any buffs recently? To be honest, I haven't seen him at all. Not I even in my post. So. It's just not the time where like people used to get like the Bane Marana and just kind of go around the map and find your little hit jobs and then allow that lane to just get a huge upper hand and be able to snowball up. So without that kind of peanut butter and jelly combo it's just bane who's kind of been left on the wayside for now but he's back and uh we'll see how much potency he's gonna have in this game obviously he's great against heroes that are pretty bkb uh, dependent being able to have that lockdown uh he can nerf down the damage fairly well of course with his uh enfeeble and then uh I don't know. He's a great zoner, even against offlaners, being able to keep them back. You can always sleep them if they get a bit too aggressive. You can never underestimate the damage from uh, his nuke. It is just huge, huge damage. So he can quickly turn something right around. He is a good setup for Axe, I think, as you mentioned. And he also matches up well against Troll. It's a hero that will just run into the middle of the fight. Very easy to grip him. Only the Fissure, really, to break it. Uh, I think Bane has a lot of opportunity to... Make this troll's life a living hell. Hmm. I agree with you. Fifth ban for VP now. They'll want to ban an era hero, I feel. Ex should expect... Well, actually, I, I guess the Venomancer is going to be Ape Mother's hero. So maybe it is an era troll and they want to ban a Jonas hero. Not 100% sure. They could consider an aggressive tri-lane Ancient Apparition troll ES pretty strong. But yeah, they they will they will go with that last variant, removing a Jonas hero, the lead yes. commander. So other pro probable options, Bat Riders made its way all the way through Tidehunter as well. It depends if they want to go huge with the team fight. Uh, then they have the Earthshaker Tidehunter wombo combo kind of factor there, which is certainly nice. But uh, we'll have to see. Tidehunter could have problems, of course, in the laning phase against someone like Bane. But we'll find out here. By the way, I'm going to apologize ahead of time in case I get a delivery. My printer is on the way. <laughs> it, could, it could come during this game. Okay. Well, we'll I, I, in advance, I will forgive you if you have to step out. Thanks. But only this one time. Never again. Yeah. Not Gavin Claus, sadly. It's just going to be my printer. <laughs> That's like the least exciting delivery ever. But, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a necessary one, I suppose. It's not a pizza, sadly. <laughs> NIP now. Final ban. Looking at what VP need, probably a G hero. Yeah, they'll ban the Razor. What else does he play? Ember. We saw his Lycan. He can play Storm. Hmm. I'm trying to think about other G heroes. They've banned three so far. G yeah. used to be famous for his Storm. He used to be the Storm player. But dating back to like TI2 era, but it's been a while. Back in the day. Back in my day. Oh, Night Stalker. Night Stalker's out there. Night Stalker wouldn't be too bad. It's definitely good against heroes that do require big initiation because then they don't get the impact in. Well, well, well. All right. G Storm. He's a prophet. Nice. Yeah, I, I think it's a G, it's a classic G hero. It's also pretty good this game, right? What do NIP have? I feel like maybe they have to consider a Doom at this point. They don't have great solutions for Bristleback. They don't have great solutions for Storm. The only issue with the that pick, though, is are the lanes going to work out? Because Doom is not going to have a good time against Bristle or Axe. Or Storm, frankly, if it, if he is given the safe lane. And I can tell you, just as a guy who likes to play Ancient Apparition, there's eventually times when you want to have a little bit of that me time to farm up. And with a Storm in the game, you're like, nowhere safe. So even the supports are going to have to play a little more timid on eggshells. And there's your Doom counter to kind of take it back towards your Storm Spirit. And it works nicely against Bristle. But, of course, there is that factor where you got a lot of targets to Doom. And you got to make sure you pick the right one. Yeah, they have good, decent defensive supports. The Venge Swap, quite good. The Bane Sleep, more just a, a temporary combo breaker. Unlikely to really save G. I think Doom was the only really viable pick at this point, but I still worry about if NIP are going to be able to lane it properly. 
And it will be the era troll. So it's it is gonna be that Venno going mid. Venno mid, G Storm probably the one that goes mid. I don't really think anyone else here can lane against a Venno. Mm -hmm. I mean hell, nobody can really lane against Venno, but you, someone's got to do it, right? It's a shame we don't see the olden days of... Uh, I mean, I like the the high tempo that Storm Five Spirit will bring to this remaining. game, but like the olden days when you see like an Alchemist mid, that would have been so much serious minus armor already on the dire side, and they are already got the benefit of getting to Roche a little bit easier. It would just melted them and annihilated them. And, and if NIP were considering any sort of remote push strat, that acid spray works so nicely, but... I really like what Storm Spirit can bring here. Doom could make things a bit more questionable, but that also adds a lot of pressure onto the Doom itself. But here we go, man. Game number three. Last game of the Alien Wear Cup. I'm ready. Um, my body is tingling. I'm excited. I want some big throws. Let's enter 644 mode, folks. We're all we're all along for this roller coaster ride that promises to be game three. So Doi can be playing your off lane axe once more. G on his signature storm. Yol, the Bane. Jot him your venge, and then that will leave 633 taking up the bristleback safe. Look at how much pressure they're adding towards just this bottom rune, especially on the side of NIP. It's it's a super loss if you don't get a hold of either bounty rune. So being able to at least trade one, but thank you so much, Ice Frog, for having two runes and, and have these bounties be so valuable because it creates for action a lot of the time right off the bat. And we're seeing it here. It's like two gangs. Don't cross this line. This is our turf. And then they have to eventually meet up to get the little golden nugget, whatever it might be. <laughs> it really does look like a little golden nugget. As they will walk down into the river. And VP, not going to contest. The battle begins. And at the same time, Jonas will also be ushered away. It's, it's always the same thing, it feels like. When, when the team split up, it's rare that you even see the kill. It's just one team's like, all right, we're the big dog. And they're like, yeah, you're the yeah. big dog. You can have this one. Because that... That momentum, and we've seen it even, I believe, yesterday in one of the games, just the, the the tipping point of, like, a bad engagement at the start where you lose qu three quickly, just it does so much to the game early on. You're uh, you're allowing them to have so much. You're probably slightly on tilt. It's, it's more often than not not worth the risk. But the tension is always going to be there. So Jonam's going to be, for now, off in the woods. Not time to stack just yet. Now he's rotating top. This is not going to be an easy lane for Axe. That's for damn sure. You've got the troll range slow to initiate. Uh-oh. Speaking of initiation, Jonas already. I mentioned the offlane Doom would have a rough laning phase, but this goes beyond that. Goo already skilled up. I think Jonas uh -huh. not expecting it. Will he get denied to neutrals? They need a SWAT. No, he oh, is the Hadouken. Hadouken. Damn. That hurts. Very nice. Well, when you get the... Level one point in the goo. It certainly slows them down, but it's going to take a while to bring him down. And Well, he's able to walk himself over, and that creep finishes him off. <laughs> he's like, please, finish me. Finish me. Okay. Just because you asked so nicely, I will. But he, both offlaners are really going to struggle. The main difference here, I guess, is the Doom at least has that guaranteed income from Devour. Both can go to the jungle if need be. He doesn't have Devour yet, though. He, he had to go for the level one Scorched Earth. But he's he's not having a ton of fun. So that like, I, I guess uh, that leaves our mid lane, we, which we haven't talked about. But man, G is just wrecking eight mother. And that's exactly what I was gonna say. Eleven and four, a mother. Not as nice when you're not going against that fat melee hero that you could take advantage of. Now you see this guy, and it's not gonna be as easy. Building up those levels, getting a hold of a couple of those wards so they're not as easy to quickly bring down would be helpful. But here we go, Invis or Shaker. He's good at getting things started here. Let's see if he can take use of it, even though it was scouted out. We'll see what he does. Nicely done by Seal Kid. He grabs the rune while he's still fading, quickly eats a clarity, which does not break the invis. And it will allow him to maybe make a play on mid. Though Jotam, they know about this rune being picked up and actually make a kill happen is not that simple. They can try for it, though. Seal Kid's in position for a Fissure. They go for the Gale, and it's right when the Courier's back. Maybe they even end up getting G here. He's blocked in quite a bit, taking heavy harassment from Eight Mother, and he will end up going down. They saw the rune. They knew the ES was probably coming mid, but I guess they just didn't expect that exact timing. Yeah, he... Too That's risky. just a little cocky. Too risky. Yeah, you well, you have to wait till that Earthshaker shows up somewhere before you play that kind of Zealous, and you're not level 6 yet. He paid the price for that one, and Seal Kid's happy. We'll be able to walk back to lane, and he gets involved in a small bit of a kill, and they're still controlling this bomb lane beautifully, allowing for some nice farm. 
onto uh, Era, who's got free rain. Still second in CS, though, so even though Storm was brought down, that only helps out the Venomancer a bit. Yeah, Storm, one of the better heroes, I'd, I'd say, against the Veno, has good range, has pretty easy last hitting coming from the Overload, and high armor, a good Bottle Crow candidate to help him sustain, but it does get to that point where the wards are just going to constantly be sieging your tower, pushing the lane. You go to grab a rune, your tower takes like half damage. Someone will always have to be here to deal with the Veno, and that's just the, the irritating nature of the Ape Mother heroes. It's either this or uh -oh. the Viper, it seems. They're going on Jonas, and he's playing a game where he doesn't want to go with a wand, even against a Bristle, and let's see. Centaur, I might need you again. <laughs> Help! Oh, he's going to turn the corner. He's like, nah, I'm not going anywhere. This, this time with Quills, yeah, there's nowhere you can go. It's just going to happen. As long as he keeps on coming top, He'll get experience and he'll slow down the supports, but it's it's almost inevitable he'll die at least once every couple minutes. If they want to commit three, like what's Doom really going to do? Need that stick against Bristle. He was, at the time I clicked on him, only had 180 gold and couldn't quite buy it, but maybe even investing in it a bit sooner helps out. Possibly in situations like that. Mid lane, though, they put out the Gale. G. Here comes a rotation. They cancel that rotation, but hey, they force out a TP. I guess it's not all too bad for the cost of a Gale. Definitely not. And... That's the thing about the Veno, is it's requiring the Venge to sit mid and heroes to be ready to TP in and support. It's it's putting a lot of pressure on the lane beyond just irritating the storm. Sure he's CSing Whoa, well. Doom. Well, Jonas, this is this is a long journey from home, my friend. Hey, but look who's coming to help. It's Ape Mother with a DD. Now Jonam's gonna be in trouble. That's gonna be a swift hit down, and they're looking to go back to Bane. But he's already on the way out, so thanks to Ape Mother being able to come on over. They assist Jonas, who's been bullied so hard out of his lane, he just has lost home, apparently. Dude jumps the doy here, though. The axe is coming out. He gets the bash, too. That's going to cause the cold feet to proc, and it means the end of Satoy's life. What a timely bash from Era. Oh, that hurts. That 10% oh. value. Era's a man. He was getting ready to dive, thinking about the opportunity there. Jump in uh, mid, though. G's hit six. Oh, Ape Mother taking some heavy harass oh. here. One more zip. Gets him with the brain sap support. Oh, they're pinging him out. Fissure from the low ground. G now has to walk back the other way, but that's sleep. Sorry, buddy. It's going to allow G to walk away, but here comes Seal Kid. Needs a few more seconds, but he does not have the mana for the Fissure. And G's going to do the small safety ball to get away from that, but it'll be a one-man takedown, and they don't lose anyone. Yeah, they, they use the troll ulti hoping to get some extra auto attacks off, but <laughs> unfortunately it's an Earth Shaker. He swings the totem, then he's got to heft it back up, take a step, few steps forward, then swings it again. Yeah, take a moment to breathe. <laughs> Hold on. Can, can, we, can we have a rest heavy, up, guys? I'm you know exhausted. How heavy this thing is? <laughs> Probably weighs like a thousand pounds or something. It's not easy being Earth Shaker, you know? It's a tough life. Bottle, yes, Ooh. actually. Oh, no, it's nice a mother's bottle. Up. Okay. Time for Storm Spirit to get some kills. Level 7. Hello, how you doing there, Hanskin? There's a wave, a pull. I don't even really need to use my ultimate. You're dead. That was easy work. Those types of kills are just so ideal for Storm because one of the issues with this hero, like, you get a kill, but if you just blow all your mana for a single hero kill, sometimes it's not even worth it. You, that During that time, you could have CS, like, four waves walking back to base, walking back to lane. But if you get a kill like that, you've got full mana, you've used one bottle charge. Well, not full, but enough mana to, to make some things happen. Denied. That's a Storm's dream scenario, basically. Yeah, exactly. And you can go back to lane with plenty of resources just in case there's an opportunity to make a net pick play or in case they make the jump. He's got plenty of mana to work with, but more or less the same. Jonas has uh, stepped off from the lane and is going to go towards his level 6 farming a bit in the jungle, which is always safe. It's it's always okay if you really need to pull out from the lane and go to the jungle just to make sure you could secure some some bit of gold. Handing over kills to your opposing laner is worse than just allowing him to have free farm. And Doom is backing off to the woods. He's got the Tranquil Boots complete now. Irritating Fissure comes out. Just chafey plays in general from NIP. Fissure blocking, Venom Ward spam. Yeesh. Chafey. Chafee. Gotta get that. Gotta get that baby powder out and get this get this going again. <laughs> they they need some lotion, going, man. You know. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Chafee. Chafee. I'll have to use that one. 
<laughs> I was, uh, I don't know. It was. It used to be a thing with me and my my college friends. We don't. We <laughs> whenever we're trying to like get under each other's skin, we we'd always call it chafing. We had a Perfect. whole whole routine surrounding chafing. We chafing culture basically. Should be a chafing <laughs> venomancer and viper set. <laughs> the chafe masters. <laughs> oh, I love it. Net worth leader though is going to be Era. Hasn't really ventured anywhere from this bottom lane, but hasn't really needed to. He's got plenty of space to work with here. He is going with the Helm of the Dominator build, it looks like. Maybe potentially Saint Junyasha after, which seems to be the, the typical. Some players have been experimenting, trying something else. I know Team Fire and in TC tried to do like the Midas Blink Scotty kind of get up on Troll, uh, which was used in the East, but he didn't find much success with it. So this seems to be kind of the safe and standard. Oh, no, it's a Vlad's. You know, prove me wrong. It's okay. Hmm. Oh, mid lane. Doom. G. That's a sad G. He's getting some hate, man. As well as he's CSing. One and two, and constantly just fearing these ganks. Meanwhile, bottom lane, the grip. Eric caught out, but he gets off the blind. I, oh, not dead yet. Run. All right. Dead. Easy Z is like, where's that ice guy? Not going <laughs> to find him, but it's an easy kill takedown on Era, who I was just praising for having free space bottom. Caster curse, something like that. But he does get dropped, and it's now five to four. Not as high octane as some of the previous games. This game has got a lot more on the line. You don't have that free wiggle room to kind of throw a game away. The chips are on the table. Vlad's is slightly unusual on Troll. I mean, part of it we normally see a mid. He, he's got fairly spammable nukes, so you definitely need some sort of mono regen, which Bottle generally provides. But in this case, the Vlad's will help for that. I think plus armor is very valuable to NIP this game. They're up against Axe. They're up against Bristle. Venge minus armor. Storm actually mm. is an underrated auto attacker, I would say. So, it's slightly unconventional on Troll, but I, I think it fits in with what they're up against, as well as mm. what the, the Troll needs. I'm sorry, these stacks. Yummy, yummy. BZZ having a field day here with the assistance of Jotam. He is going to be building in some very nice gold. Looks like he's going to bully forward towards the Crimson Guard. So, the durability very much going to be real here for Bristleback. You know, normally when we see a good ancient farmer, teams tend to ward this hill uh, on the Radiant side so that they... They know, if this, they know if there's a stack, and then they also can see when it's being taken out. But having failed to do that, NIP now find themselves up against a, a one position, super fat bristle, 5.3k net worth. He's way ahead of everybody else, including a troll who's got more CS than him. That ward spot is so good, because it doesn't just give you that bit of ancient vision. It gives you all the vision on the side of the tier 1 tower when you're going to be considering pushing it remotely soon. Like, you'll know if they're parked there on the side looking for a solid defense or if there's going to be, like, hidden TPs or anything. So, yeah. Like I said, not being able to take advantage of that allows them to get big stacks like that. And now they're going to be itemizing a bit further. Plus, they get deny on the mid lane. Mm, that gold's ours. We're going to keep it. Now, Axe picks up his Blink Dagger. Everything is coming up VP at this mid-game approach. Yeah, you know the fu the, the cruising for a bruising is, is growing near. They're ready to fight. Uh, they've got the, they've got that. They have the Vanguard. G's a bit underfarmed, but I don't I don't think he's the hero that needs to come to all the fights. He can come in if it's convenient. Otherwise, Radiant focus on farming. Does have to keep tabs on the Doom though. If the Doom and Earthshaker off the map, he's got to play a little more defensively. Which for now they're escorting him, maybe baiting him, waiting for the 12 minute rune, and he will snag an invis. He's not going to pop it yet. He walks up the ramp, and then IP are. Retreating the hell out. Yes. Oh, Era is able to get away, but I don't know if Hanskin's going to be as lucky. They're eyeballing nearby. They don't quite know what's going on, but maybe something went down. Oh, Bane disconnected, so they're going to take a pause. Maybe they were... Oh, no, he's up at the top lane doing his own thing. Um, they but, know. They, I mean, they saw, yeah. they saw the one, but they also, now with the pause, can look at the minimap and see. There's zero heroes on the map. By There's, deduction, <laughs> it's got to be... On this part of the map somewhere. As a brilliant Dota 2 professional player, logic tells me there's probably <laughs> a bunch of heroes in the jungle. They're not here. If they're not here, they're probably in this area where X equals Q. Yeah, this is terrible. My minimap's all, like, geometric with these lines. I, I'm not sure if I would call that geometry. I made up a word. <laughs> it's fine. 
They they could look towards Roche soon for VP. I think they have the medallion on Chatham. Um, I thought someone bought one. No, maybe not. Okay. I'm, I'm literally having hallucinations back to that crazy game one. <laughs> but NIP are going to go for some catch-up Dota. Snagging a double Midas now for H Apparition and Doom. And the way VP are itemizing and building, they need to keep the pressure up. You do not want to let this turn into a farm fest against the, the double Midas, the Devour, the Troll Doom duo. Honestly, if it goes late enough, uh, with the Storm not snowballing, I, I would say NIP probably have the edge there. Yeah, they're a team that I said before, you give them an inch, they'll take the mile to come right back into it. And they even made that last game uh, surprisingly a bit too difficult for Virtus Pro. So Virtus Pro continue to farm up more, even ancient stacks here. Didn't get successful pickoffs there in that previous smoke attempt. So yeah, it's more time for NIP to feel like they're alive and able to build up more. Seal Kid as they scatter top lane. Bane has been parked up in this top lane for quite a while, and they've yet to have Sadoi get his first big dunk with the Blink Dagger. They're waiting for it, but they can't quite find it. He's been really quiet for an axe, yeah. to be honest. And I, I don't think VP are happy about that. Their supports are also starting to look very poor, so I feel there needs to be a bit more sense of urgency from them. The, the G Orchid is going to take a while. They, if they just wait for this Orchid... They won't be doing anything until Doom has his blink, until Troll has his next item. It looks like Sanjin Yasha the choice for Era. And then maybe even AA has the makings of like a component or two of the eggs. We'll see though. For now, perhaps waiting for BZZ's Crimson Guard or BKB, Pipe even. Could be a good Pipe game, you're up against Venno AA. In fact, I, I think it's a very good, almost mandatory Pipe game. Yeah. I would agree with that. Oh, jump in mid lane. They get a hold of Doom. Plus the wave. They bring down the, the big demon. And he doesn't get the opportunity to get anything off. So it's taken quite a while, but VP were able to get that pick. Finally. And now with that, they follow through with going with this mid tier one objective. And NIP, they just want to continue to kind of stall out the game a bit and play a bit more passive. Don't want to confront quite yet when they feel VP probably have the upper hand in these team fights. This is a good time to be pressing the issue. They just got their medallion. They're trying to take a tier one mid. If they do that, Roshan likely in the cards for VP next. Now let's see, what is Bristleback building? Okay, pipe. I really like this. Hood now, pipe next. It's, it's definitely a great pipe game. Yeah, we always say it. Not enough teams really take advantage of it, but the thing is, it's pipe, it just feels like it takes so much work. You gotta get this hood and you gotta go to the secret shop and then back again that recipe's pretty somewhat expensive it feels like effort you just don't want to take but it's also just not a very sexy item no certainly not and the thing is is you need a non-sexy item to go against non-sexy heroes like venomancer so i guess <laughs> it just kind of works out <laughs> yeah you want to be gross and, and grody and just pick the veno viper every game all right well we're, we're not gonna stupid dank pipe <laughs> We're not going to dress up and look nice for you. We're just going to be slobs and go for our hood. Buckle well, down. That smart call, Virtus Pro. they know that they have the upper hand in a team engagement, so if they're not going to come out from their little caves and holes, then we'll just go do Roche. If they decide to come and, you know, interject, we'll, we'll take that fight. Otherwise, we get the free Roche, which they do. They secure an Aegis for themselves, and NIP just continue to try to find farm for everyone and take advantage of this of those pre precious Midas's, you know, so continue to farm up to the late game. At this point, Doom gonna go drums, then probably Blink will be the, the choice for Jonas. Maybe he just rushes the eggs. That's the other main option here. In the meantime, the Venno Agonims is inbound, the AA eggs. As you mentioned, just keep on farming if you're an IP, and I think split push, try to avoid fights. You're not that strong right now, but if you give it, 10 minutes or so, then this lineup really starts to come into their own. And so it becomes VP's job to take advantage of this weak window now, like five to eight minutes where NIP are, the Midas's haven't fully kicked in. So They'll do it. I, I think they're applying enough pressure that they're in okay shape, but not they're not dominating so hard that they should be comfy and relaxed. Well, they put multiples bottom. G could make the jump, but I don't know if they know that Earthshaker is also here. And yeah, he sees the other TP come in. He's like, oh, we're out of here. But just to echo from what you're saying, you know, a lot of people say that Midas is at its worst right after you get it. And that's when you can tell NIP are playing their safest.
don't want to engage when they just get these Midas's. They want to secure Handskin getting an Agnum Scepter on his AA. They want to secure Doom's next item so he can get off a, a good initiation, whether it's going for that Blink Dagger. You know, it's not the time. Hmm. Let's see. How close are they to the pipe? Oh, already has the address. So he just needs recipe. That's like an 18-minute pipe. Very, very quick. Got him lane, though. Big zip in from G. Does get the uh, big Poison Nova off. It connects on both. They're able to bring down Jotam. G's trying to get away from this. But there's the Tomahawks coming in. Era going to be OK. Can he get him from the high ground? Boop. Takes down his Aegis right there. They move forward for Yol. Ice Blast will connect on Sedoi, but not the Bane. G comes right back in with full resources from that Aegis Second Life. Tries to start onto Doom, but they're just withering away a bit from all this poison. But that's where BZZ thrives. And he does push forward, but they decide to pull back. A bit of a hot mess for only one casualty so far, and G's going to be able to pick up a DD as the fight does conclude. Well, that was not a very good use of the Aegis. Dies with the Aegis immediately, zips in, zips out, uses all his mana in like two seconds and didn't really do any damage. It's a pretty poor storm, to be honest. He's gonna. He's still got a while, a ways to go before he can really get into this game. And mm -hmm. uh oh, he might get sniped. Boom! See you later. And he soul ringed and right as it hit him. The three pointer, my man. Nice shot. That hurts. Any fight where NIP is gonna win like that, that's a great fight for them. This is supposed to be the period where VP are supposed to be dominating. Where are my dunks? Where's my jump in slams? I'm seeing. Three pointers from NIP, but no slam jams from VP. No long ball jump in pickoffs from Storm Spirit. They're missing the date, and they're allowing the opportunity for NIP to continue to farm up into a beautiful late game period, and this game could end up slipping away from them. VP, they held this series in the palm of their hands. They should have won game one. G, freely admitting it was a total throw. Creeps were fingered, things were very ugly. As Era gets slept up here, they go for a grip, but level death will cancel it. Nicely done by Jonas. Jonas. Yeah, awkward start. Uh, Bane catching out Era, and they're like, guys, let's get on this. But with Jonas being nearby, it's not going to be that easy lockdown. And they'll be able to finally take that bounty. Just more awkward engagements where Virtus Pro are trying to set up pickoffs. They can't get it. And that's always going to be a win for NAP at this point in the game. They're just not getting enough done. And the other thing is their support duo, they're running a, a Bane Venge. Later on, these are not going to offer what an AA Earthshaker duo are in a team fight, right? So you are you have to get more done now. And honestly, they've been fairly quiet. Net worth, very oh. low, top lane, nice another snipe, and a quick echo slam. Oh, sorry, that was just very nicely set up. Those are two supports taking down a Storm Spirit. And meanwhile, bottom, the Doom dying is a trade, but... The Doom can keep his economy going very easily just by being in the game. The Storm has to actually see us and not die. Uh-oh. Are they going for something on Jotam here? No, not going to happen. Maybe just her shake is saying, I'm much more farmed than you. I am happy <laughs> to trade fists. He's actually the least farmed. <laughs> but oh. Yeah, he's he's been more, I feel like he's been much more impactful. The, the yeah, DS that's what I meant, LD. I got you. <laughs> hmm. Doesn't feel like it's seven to seven, evened up at twenty-one minutes in. I feel like Virtus Pro by this point should be, you know, pulling in a lot more. Yeah, they should be in cruise control, but they got the axe blink. I mean, how, how many times has he used it? He's one, one, and one. That is not an axe score. Now this is certainly. A very quiet game from Sadoi, and you felt it from the start. He got the Blink Dagger at about 12 minutes. They got the smoke, and they really haven't been able to find that jump in. Credit to SNIP with good ward vision, good communication to you know, decide where their engagement could possibly be coming. Another smoke attempt happening mid lane to try to get that kill happening, but they're also using the Venom Mancer and his wards very nicely to kind of get that extra side vision. But... Still, they might turn the corner here. BZZ stunned, kind of trapped here. He gets doomed up. Cold Feet flies out, and he gets blocked by the ward, so he could freeze, and he will. AA Blast goes through, and they oh just kind of pincer the bristle, and he goes down. Beautifully set up from NIP. What, what was that? He gets. They just start walking towards top. They leave him there, and they just let him die. 
What was that? It seemed like the whole plan was to bait the Bristleback, but then they just leave him alone mid, and he stays around mid. This uh, this VP team just... I don't know if it's past their bedtime or what, but they are not bringing their A game here today. Where's the VP that just crushed Alliance 2-0 and made it look easy? I don't know, man. I, I, I'm, I'm a little dis disheartened by the sloppiness, but I, I guess it's it's just part of the package. Sometimes they make the big plays, sometimes NIP just able to outmaneuver them and slow them down. And, and I think part of it is the, the irritating Venno pick. It's, it's a little boring to watch, Pit, perhaps, but makes it hard to get the map control. Well, they're trying to kill that irritating guy top lane, but he can't even get it done. Jump in Echo, not going to be quite on time. G jumps out. Jotam swaps himself into the heart of an Ice Blast, and he goes down, but there's our dunk. We've been waiting so long. Can I get another one here, Sadoi? He's trying to. With the Ur, there it is. Double dunk for that man. We waited a long time for it, but those dunks will only even things up. Nine to nine, and well, bottom lane, that's where NIP are continuing to find their farm. Era's almost got his BKB, so I'm, I'm sure they're not too disheartened by that. Yeah, still VP going for the early to mid game items, going for the more aggressive ganking supports, not not focusing on late game or team fight as much, and they got to keep it up. That is not good enough on its own. Looking for Jonas here Jonas. bottom. Yeah, good solo takedown. The Doom dies. Still his Ags is near, though, despite that death. He's only about a 1,000 gold short as uh, Ice Blast going to clip y'all. Speaking of Ice Blast, that Ags also almost done. They're about to pick up double Ags. They already have the Veno Ags. That'll be a triple Ags for NIP. Where's that Earthshaker eggs? Gotta get a blink first. Yeah. One step at a time. You know what I miss in Dota 1? I don't know if you remember this or if you were playing when they added it because it was like later on. But they, they they would add like these really cool glowing effects. Like if you had eggs, like Earthshaker's totem would glow. The Jug yeah. Sword would get this crazy fire like trail Didn't in Zeus the air. get an extra effect too? He would also yeah. be a little more charged. Yeah. It's kind they of like, I guess back. it's kind of like the Arcanas look like. Or not the Arcanas. Uh, yeah, they are cannons, like the PA, the PA glowy th dagger thing, but I don't know. I really miss that. Just made you feel like I such a too. badass. I feel like Ogre had something, too. I'm not too sure. But yeah, definitely a fun little niche add to the game, but we'll see here. Looks like NIP are shifting all the way towards the top. I heard an Ice Blast, but I didn't see where it went. Maybe just a scout out on Roche. Yeah, not up yet. It's a long Roche timer. Oh boy. Y'all moving through, but there's a Radiant Ward plopped down, and they've got Seal Kids waiting from the backside. He can cancel any sort of grip almost instantly. Fissure comes out. He even manages to hit two. G now gonna die again. Eight Mother tanking through this. It looks like he'll survive. Yol will fall as well. NIP starting to pull away with this game number three. The graph spiking straight up. Venomancer, man. Jump onto him. You think you're gonna just get this easy pick, and he just spews out all this disgusting crap, and next thing you know, you're the ones that are on the back end. And it's just a nice rotation from the supports of NIP. They help him out, and they're the ones that come out on top two for nothing. They'll follow it up with a good objective. Era gets that tower takedown. So much going the way of NIP. It's looking very one-sided right here. It really is. I, it just, it's just not a VP tempo. 21 kills in 26 minutes. This is not how they've been winning. When they're winning, it's like two, three kills a minute. This yes. is not even one kill a minute. They like that chaotic, crazy Dota. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes they do overextend and throw away leads, but that's when these players really shine. They have a lot of great individual talent on their team. Sometimes their strategic decision-making falls a bit flat, but when they can just get in those small skirmishes all the time, that, that's where they can just flat out outplay NIP. Like, look at the laning stage every game this series. They get two, three kills. They win two, three lanes. That's what they. That's the kind of Dota that VP need to be playing, but NIP are not allowing them to anymore. They're just playing this one weight. They've slowed it down, and they've put VP into their comfort, or out of their comfort zone, and NIP into theirs. Roche is going to be scouted out the last second at Ice Blast, so it looks like both teams know it's up. So we'll see uh, migration come here. Maybe a smoke popping up from VP. There it is. Now they'll go right towards the other side. Maybe catching out NIP before they have the opportunity to go towards the pit is the best bet here for VP. We'll see if it works. 
Crossing Blinken. path, jump in. Yeah, they get both with Sadoi on the back end though, Era isolates Yol. Yol gets the full on the Era, holding him in place, and now they get their dunk. They take down Jonas, but it's gonna be a two for one. Second dunk even things up. Era going toe to toe, man fighting right now in Sadoi's face. I don't care if you're an axe, I'm gonna chop you down. Gets it done, turns back, you're next, buddy. Boom, get him done. Come on, there you go, double kill. Eight Mother gets that with his pesky poison, and he's not done. Blink daggers forward. And now, gee, the slow and painful death is he has no mana, and Era's like, can I just get one of my freaking kills? Tried to steal that, steal that one. <laughs> this this Veno AA combo is very deceptive. At first, VP popped the pipe. They're going in very aggressively. Sadoi had his BKB as well, which I believe he used. They didn't take any damage at first, but then the Veno ult comes out. The pipe is worn down. The Ancient Apparition ult begins to tick in and work its magic, which is, by the way, an, an Ag's Ice Blast as well. And by the time the fight's over, everyone's just dropped down to, like, a half or less HP, so you, you just need the troll alive. If he's alive, then everyone else is eventually going to die. And mind you, this is before the Earthshaker, Blake. Once he gets that, they can... They, it won't be here slowly dying. It'll probably just be, like, an instant chain reaction of crumbling... Crumbling backliners getting blown yeah. up. It's a plague. The definition of a plague through your team, connecting <laughs> both those big ultimates. Just, you're lucky to survive, especially when you're one of these supports. Just and and unfortunately for, for G, uh, just the storm pick has just not worked out for him. One of his classic signature heroes, amazing storm player. Looking back to, oh god, what was the team even? The, oh, Darer. It was the old Darer that he was playing on with art style. Man, that was ages ago, but. It's, he just hasn't had that powerful start. Two and six, very impotent, it feels. And even one Ice Blast will bring him down to like half-life. So he makes a long jump to try to farm it up. It's just feeling like the Storm Spirit and the Act, though. So the Axe has been able to bring it back with a couple of quick takedowns here and there in these fights. It still didn't reach its peak soon enough, I felt, when it could really take advantage. But they're, I don't want to say desperate, but they're hungry to get a kill at this point as they bully through their woods. Those Venom Wards will just keep scouting them out and play will get their space. Even Yol trying to get up and ahead to maybe get a hold of someone with that ultimate or at least sleep and lock them in place. But once again, the pesky NIP will be able to just walk away and wait uh -oh. for their opportunity to maybe return and make a jump in like that. Double Gale catches both of them. Ice Blast and Vino ult. Doom, you're not going anywhere. Level death, swap back with BZZ. He's he's going to have to go to a hospital or something because this is going to be devastating. Yol's on his back end like, oh, nope, that doesn't matter. Shattered, taken down. Jonam also getting slowly withered away towards the top. Sadoi, Yol, everyone. Weak and run. wounded. The plague. It's, the plague is coming. Me, please. Oh. Jeez. There's just no treatment. There's no cure. There's no doctor. <laughs> Prognosis, gonna... not good. Prognosis, very, very likely to die. Three dead, and it seems NIP have this game by the balls. Five pushing in top. They're in good position here. Storm trying to slow them down with some zips in and out, but ready for that was Eight Mother, who gets off the Yules. G, just enough mana to make it back to the well, where Arrow will try to keep him. Throw some uh, angry axes out along the way, and... Oh, hello, Sadoi. Where's your team at, my friend? They're busy dead or recovering. This will prompt a buyback from Yol, but he's going to end up going down Aragoid man mode in the fight, and G's out of mana. One bash, he's done for. Doesn't even need it. The maim comes out, gets the kill, and, well, who's going to be next? Jotam, will he be the next down? We'll see. I would imagine so. They've already dipped a lot into their buybacks. This is, like, the final defensive hurrah. If they don't successfully defend out their base, which it looks like they will be able to push them back, Triple buyback, be though. Two of them yeah. on cores. This is going to be the steepest hill, heel, the steepest hill to climb back if uh, Virtus Pro want to try to get this back to square even. So much rewards happening right there for an. They're just not a comeback lineup, you know. Like that's that's the thing that worries me for VP. They haven't gone for farming items. They haven't gone for items that scale that well in the late game, and they just they don't flash farm. They don't split push. Storm is okay at it, but he's constantly in fear for his life. G has no vision right now. Well, he's got a little bit. This ward about to expire, and this one also. So they're about to be in the dark, and that is not a situation where Storm can get out on the map and create space for himself to get some new items. Game is getting very claustrophobic and very dark and lonely here for VP. Yeah, very hard game for them at this point. Era has... 
Spiper Wolf Thump. Gold. Yeah. Get the boots to travel. Why not? Extra bit of mobility and move speed. Him and their whole team pretty much as well. Even Eight Mother's got the Blink Dagger, of course, on his Venomancer. And they smoke up, and they could be looking for that final blow. Here as they push on towards the Virtus Pro side. 2,000 more dollars. Sounds so tasty. Air the vision. Charge. Oh, they see BZZ now. And they're going to go in right with Era straight into the bash. Now the Arrow Shaker Fissure catching the Venge, so there's no defensive swap, but they then follow up with a Doom onto the Bristleback. Pipe was already used, but what does it matter? Doom going to run you down all the way back. Now Axe being chased out by Troll. Who's the real man? Yeah, I'm the real man. <laughs> That's what he says. Doom will actually get a double frag, taking down the Bane on, on the retreat. and. That's a dieback for your Bristle, a dieback for your Axe, actually also a dieback for your Bane, a triple dieback for VP. This might just be it. Aegis didn't even need to be used. It just expired on its own right there. So they'll finish out this Tier 2 and go right back into the base. Have yet to really do some serious damage inside the home of Virtus Pro, but they have plenty of time to work with with Bristle out 30 seconds, Axe for near 50. This is now Aaron popping out the ultimate. Back and behind, G trying to stall a bit, tries to isolate Seal Kid, but they do converge over and he'll walk out the other side. But they are still pressing onto this mid lane. They take down that tier three. Jot him, waiting, watching desperately. Can't really offer a whole lot to help out. It looks like, at least for now, the mid lane is going to be taken apart. And IP, they've been the comeback kids all tournament long. They went down 0-1. It looked like they weren't going to even end up having a shot. And, well, or sorry, yeah, they, they go, they make it 1-0, but it really should have been 0-1. Then they somehow managed to drop that game too. VP crushed them. There's been so many series where NIP, I think their first series, they, it, they were down like 15k gold. Then they come back to win, and they just continue to show a lot of resilience and patience under pressure. I think their laning stage still needs work. They seem to consistently lose the lanes, but... Oh, outside of maybe eight mother heroes, the the Viper, the Ve the Veno, but unfortunately, they fortunately for them, they they just have this ability to fight their way back into games, never give up, and they're 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 masters of finding the game changing team fight. It feels like that's one of this team's greatest strengths. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like they really know when the right time to take a fight is, and when the right time just to stall out and wait. If we're investing into Midas's, this is not our time to go. We'll just wait, play patiently. If we lose a tower here and there. That's fine. It's not worth it if you're going to be picking off kills. But when they get the momentum, they take advantage of that as well. Seal Kid going to get caught on the side, though. So Doi's able to chop him down. Yo on the way out. NIP1 is still continuing to fight your air, pressing forward. BKB throws out the slow. Yo will be taken down there from Era. Mega kill for that man. And even though they're split apart, you can see Sadoi with. Uh, does he have a TP? Yes, he has a TP, but 25 seconds. He'll be stuck in those trees, weighing about. NIP are going to be able to take out the remaining outer tower here in the bottom lane. And they have You're Doom right now. Buyback still on cooldown for Axe and Bristle. So if they die here once more, could well be game. No Roshan just yet. That may be what NIP wait for. Get the Rosh, get, finish up probably your MKB on the troll. Maybe a, just a straight Daedalus. And then with Aegis, go for the GG. Go to take home the Alienware Area 51 Cup. First place prize of 4,500 sweet, sweet dollars. They're close, man. And I, I think for NIP, this would be... I mean, you look at the list of teams in this tournament and people will notice the absence of Cloud9, Secret, getting ready for DAC. But other than that, the, it's pretty much all the, the next teams in Europe. I, I think we were lacking Power Rangers and Hellraisers. But outside of that, you had Asus Polar, you had VP, the new Alliance, Tinker. And if they're able to walk their way through this event and come out on top, then it, it really bodes well for their future. It's, this is a team that's likely not to be invited straight to TI unless they have a remarkable land result in the next few months. But, you know, a, a team that I think could definitely fight their way through the qualifiers and, and earn a slot in Seattle this, this summer. And I think from what we learned watching ES Portal, Star Ladder, and now Alienware Cup is any of these teams can take a game off anyone at that same level, at least for now. Haven't really had the opportunity to see them compare to some of those upper echelon tier one teams, but it's really hard if you wanted to try to make a wager between anyone. Polar's taking games off NIP, NIP on Polar. They've taken down Empire. Empire's taking down everyone. It's could be anyone's game, and it comes down to who's able to kind of put together that better draft, who's kind of eaten their Wheaties before they go to the game and just executes a lot better. 
Makes for good Dota. And what we'll see is NIP, though they come up short in Star Ladder, trying to secure a, a championship, I guess you could say, for Alien War Cup. And Virtus Pro, a team that was easily eliminated, mind you, at DAC, have found their way into the finals here. It's a nice little return run for them as well. It shows you that the European scene is still... It's, it's not a clearly tiered scene. Outside of... Some would argue Cloud9 in secret, though we haven't really seen much of their new roster. So even then, I would say you could still argue that. But, well, Asus Polar look great at Star Ladder. Empire looking great, but those teams falling short in this cup. And I just don't know, kidding? man. Look it, at this it, ring it's a, around Everyone's in a big dog pile right now in Europe. Yeah. Until we get to see those teams with their new players jump in. They tried to look around and see if they can scout out Virtus Pro, or Virtus Pro tried to scout out NIP for a flank play, but now they're the ones that are going to get jumped. Desperate now, Sadoi jumps in, but the Poison Nova Jeez, goes out. Echo what slam, a and this could have been the YOLO smoke attempt from Virtus Pro, but it's it's not happening. They didn't find their flank play, and they lose everyone. They get nothing out of it. And uh, NIP continue to dominate here. Now 31 to 14. This game was like 6 and 6, then 7-7, seven, seven, then 9-9, nine and nine, and now it's NIP who have been all in control and not letting go. Era just chopping wood, bringing down the tier 3 top, bringing down the bottom lane will be Jonas and NIP on the cusp of taking home their first full tournament win. They end up finishing third at Starlighter. It was a great showing for a young team with a lot still to prove, and well, here they make more progress as they are taking two lanes of Rax. MVP will fight on a bit longer, but the end is coming. Era is here to close you out, my friends. He blinks on in. G will shatter. NIP, they've got VP right where they want them. In shambles, getting run over. This troll is out of control. And they will bring VP down back to the well. A full five-man wipe again. And on that note, NIP will be your Alienware Area 51 Dota 2 Cup champions. There's just no chance VP comes back from now. They're a never say die group, that's for sure. They're not looking to tap out quite yet. ZZZ's got one life to live on his bristle apparently and is gonna watch his homeland crumble around him, but he's gonna let them know that he sure is angry about it. Get off my lawn, you're ruining my house. Now, Era blinks in again, the BKB once more. Now they doom him, they bash him, they kill him off, and NIP will cleave their way through the tier fours. They are officially now with the GGs being called the champions for Alienware's Area 51 Dota 2 Cup. Congratulations to NIP, $4,500. And I think more importantly, this is, a, this is a confidence booster. They still, as I mentioned, I think they really need to work on their laning stage, but a, a better team to me is not gonna allow them as many opportunities back into games, but they, they, they do work here, man. They do work. They should feel very proud. They should. They won over a lot of fans at Star Ladder, and they continue to perform like this. That fan base continues to grow, and they should feel very excited. And I'm looking forward to seeing them be able to compete against more of the top-tier teams to see really really where they place globally, because I think there's a lot of talent there. And also got to give props to Virtus Pro. Like I said, they were coming off something like DAC where they got insta-eliminated and taken out. Like, I don't even think they got a win. And now they had made their way through all the way from the upper bracket uh, I believe. 2 0 wing alliance along the way. They beat out Tinker, and now they make their way here. They did manage to take a game. They will be able to walk away with $2,500. So props to Virtus Pro, but overall, a successful Alienware Area 51 Dota Cup. I'm excited. And with that said, guys, Dakota, thank you very much for joining me. You guys, you can all follow him on Twitter at CoddleGuy. And with that said, uh, myself, if you'd like, at LD Dota. This is the final match of the tournament. So before we go, I want to give one last shout-out to Alienware. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring and making this quick cut possible. If you did enjoy it, guys, be sure to tweet at Alienware. Let them know you loved it. Let them know if you want to see more, if you have any feedback, uh, ways that we can improve the coverage or just the format, what you'd like to see in the future. Tweet that at Beyond the Summit. Let us know what you thought. We hope you enjoyed it. It's something a bit different for us. We normally do more of the, the larger scale, longer stage type events, but it's been a lot, it's been a blast. A nice digestible format. I hope we get to do more of these in the future. I, I was surprised at just how good the games were and it's easy to follow tournaments. So uh, with that said, also special thanks to Curse Entertainment. They are the organizers uh, along with us who made this event possible. And well, we couldn't have done it without Alienware, without Curse. So show them some love, guys, if you enjoyed it. And well, with that said, if you missed any of the games, VODs are available at YouTube.com slash TV. 
And with all those thank yous and congratulations out of the way, congratulations one more time to NIP. They are the champions. And on that note, we're wrapping this show up, guys. LD and Coddle Guy, signing off.